much. We are a little bit over time, but it's a very good conclusion for this uh, Le Maître session. We still have time for a couple of questions. Yes. I have a small remark and a question. Uh, remark is following. You know that I in our labor in our library of this academy, there is a, a preprint or, or, or booklet of Dirac about Lemaitre. Yes, and uh, that the comm commemoration of the Lemaitre was made by Dirac, greatest physicist. And a question following, what this uh, happened with the uh, Hubble constant, this history, why it disappears in the translation in monthly not notice? Uh, uh, what is the status now? Okay, so I should provide a few, uh, a little, little context. The question is, um, Lemaitre derives a value for the expansion rate in his 1927 paper. In 1930, Eddington asks Lemaitre to translate his paper into English. But the translation did not contain the derivation of what became known as Hubble's constant. Lemaitre, Lemaitre did not find it useful to translate because in the intervening years, the data had improved, and so he replaced his derivation, which was based on sketchy data, with a reference to Hubble. Lemaitre, not being interested in self-promotion. Um, translator was Eddington, yes? No, Lemaitre himself translated his paper. This is known from a letter that um, he wrote to the editor at the Royal Astronomical Society. That letter was found last year. Yeah. Yeah. Vicuña. <laughs> microphone microphone no. okay i am curious about the the the, cons the primitive atom concept he, he it, that concept was coined by lemaitre and then it it turned into big bang so did lemaitre do anything to to maintain his initial uh, primitive atom concept? As I understand, the Big Bang was an irony by, by Fred Hoyle, was it? That is right, Fred so, Hoyle. Microphone. You're right that Fred Hoyle coined the term Big Bang. But your more, the more interesting question is, did Lemaitre do anything to sort of go against this? I don't know. And I, I do know he didn't feel he didn't f feel that the term did justice to his model, and in fact, I think in, in the interview he says he, he would call that rather the pri a primeval atom. Um, but okay, these are terms stick. Uh, yeah, uh, Marcello. <coughs> Thank you and congratulations for your very nice presentation. Thank you. But who was the theologian medieval that you put in the second pass that you, you say you can see here one page about the question of cosmology and the other page about a discussion of medieval theologian? Who, who was? Because as you know, we have two traditions. The tradition of some Bonaventura that say we can prove the be temporal beginning of the creation and the, the tradition of Thomas Aquino that is more important. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so Lemaitre was clearly much more oriented towards the second tradition, t sort of a m much more two levels, two levels, two distinct levels of reality. Uh, Thomas Aquinas say that it's impossible to prove the temporal start of the creation. The creation is a philosophical question that we can demonstrate with some philosophy that is the beginning of the participate being 
from the first cause of the being that is God. But this is a philosophical, it's a question of being. That is not a question of physical being, it's a general question of being. And for this tradition, he can have any problem with the, uh, the theology of the church. And I don't think that he have problems here in the academy, as you said. That's right. Uh, yes, I completely agree. Yes. Yes. Loosely speaking, Lemaitre would have said that the existence itself of the primeval atom or the existence itself of reality in a very abstract, non-temporal way was distinct from the physical emergence of, no of our classical notions of space and time. That's the point he makes in this very short paper. I think it's crystal clear. And in fact, one might say, now I'm maybe on a slippery slope here, but one might say that it is precisely Lemaitre's training, both in science and in philosophy, that allowed him to see that frontier a little more clearly than his contemporaries. Someone like Einstein would just not go there and I think it's just because he didn't see that separation very clearly. But to answer your previous question, this is Ruesbroek, who is a... F I don't know about this. I, I, I was just wondering if you or Monsignor could comment on Lemaitre's contribution to this academy, because it's a source of immense pride that he was the president of this academy and maybe of some his religious. Well, I'm sure other, others here can, can uh, say more about that, but from what, I, from what I understand, so he became president during the Second Vatican Council. Hmm? He, was, he had been a member, I believe, since its creation in 1936. Um, and in, during his presidency, presidency, I can see clearly that he was very careful about the, uh, safeguarding the autonomy of the Pontifical Academy. So he, he did feel, I believe, that this should be a forum, a platform, where one can freely and openly any, discuss about anything, and that a dialogue with the religious sphere would then naturally coexist with that. So, so in a way, he implements in his presidency, as far as I can tell, the same kind of vision which he implemented as a cosmologist in the 30s when he came up with the idea of a prime evil atom. That's somehow a little bit how I see the connection. Secondly, and this is also very important, I think, and he was well known in Leuven, in Belgium, to be extremely open-minded to people from all walks of life. Um, in that context, I think you can also see the second important activity of Lemaitre at his academy, which is he internationalized it a lot, and he um, invited uh, scientists literally from all over the world to become members. So I, I think you must probably know this better than I do, but that's... So, uh, an interesting anecdote uh, is during the Second World War in Belgium, the University of Brussels, which was not a Catholic university, was bombed. Lemaitre immediately went to the Chancellor of Leuven to say, we should invite the students of Brussels to come to Leuven. That's not so special. But he added immediately, and we should exempt them from all courses related to um, spirituality or religion. We should leave, keep an open mind. That's typical Lemaitre. Thank you again for this uh, presentation. And uh, we move now to the two papers which are back in the discussion. And I uh, begin with... Uh, Krishna Swanik Kastura Ragan with the role of space technology for enabling intergenerational equity of natural capital and disaster resilience. Uh, the floor is yours.